Hi everybody! In today's video we're going to have a look at two sounds, the glottal stop and the h sound. They are very similar and I thought some of you might get confused what the difference is. So let's make a start. First of all, what do they actually have in common? What is the same? So they are both sounds in English. And to be specific, they are both consonant sounds. They both are formed in or near the glottis and that is really here in our throat. So here's a diagram again for you and if you have a look at it you can see the vocal cords situated here when you swallow that exactly here is where the glottis vocal cords are and they close and open when you swallow and the glottis is the space between the vocal cords and they are open in the diagram. So they're both consonants and they're both formed in the glottis and that means they have the same place of articulation. They are also both unvoiced. Let's just quickly remind ourselves what that means. That means there is no vibration of the vocal cords when we make those sounds. No continuous vibration. And if you make any vowel sound, a, o, e, very clear vibration of the vocal cords, and that does not happen, happen in the glottal stop and also not when we uh, produce a h. So they share these three features and the question is now, what is different? So the main difference really is the manner of articulation. The glottal stop is a plosive, the name really says it, it's called glottal stop and another word for stop is plosive and h is a glottal fricative. So one is a plosive and the other one a fricative. Let's have a look at the glottal stop first and the exact manner of articulation. So we said already the glottal stop is a plosive and that really means when we produce the glottal stop the glottis closes and stops the airflow completely. Now you probably know other plosive sounds, for example the plosive p. Here we have a closure right at the front of the mouth and we form it with both our lips. Here the closure is in a different place, it's down here in your throat in the glottis. And so the glottis really closes, the vocal cords close and the airflow from your lungs is completely stopped and you can see this in the diagram here the air doesn't go out and then the vocal cords are suddenly opened and the air is released and that's really what produces the sound it's this little boom explosion from the airflow so the air is released through the mouth and that's very important with other sounds sometimes the air is released through the nose those are nasals and uh, for most other sounds really the air flows over the tongue and the tongue and teeth and our other articulators help form the other sounds that's not the case here with the glottal stop here's an example um, so that you can actually hear it um, the glottal stop you can't really make it on its own very easily and remember that the glottal stop is always between two vowel sounds the most common example is this one here ah, ah. so you can hear it between the two vowel sounds ah we first have a schwa and then we have an o oh, and we don't really go from one sound to the other that would be odd it would be like uh no 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 it's uh uh and the meaning of this is really mm, alarm take a second look here uh oh uh oh or also to say no uh uh and so there's a clear glottal stop 
which makes um, the second vowel sound quite sharp and distinct. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So hopefully you were able to hear it. If you want to learn more about the glottal stop, watch my full video on it, please. So what about our other sound, the H sound? Let's have a look at the manner of articulation here. So first of all, H is a voiceless. We said that already. Voiceless is the same as unvoiced. It's just a different word for it. Um, so it's a voiceless glottal fricative. Now, some of you might uh, leave a comment and say, oh, it's not classified as a fricative anymore. That is true. You will find some phonology books that say it's not a fricative and some say it is. We still call it usually a voiceless glottal fricative. However, it does have two other names. Um, sometimes it's called a voiceless glottal transition and sometimes it's also referred to as an aspirate. Um, all of those three names refer to the sound H. So it's voiceless, we know that already. And the glottis is a little bit constricted, but not closed. So that's very different to the glottal stop. So restricted just means the cords, the vocal cords come a bit closer, but just a little bit, not much. And what happens when they come closer is that we can now hear the airflow. It makes the airflow audible. And you can just imagine um, when it's windy outside and um, you have the windows closed or fully open, you don't really hear the wind maybe as much, but if you bring the window uh, a little bit closer and there's just a tiny little bit open, usually that makes the wind a lot louder. And that's exactly the same um, when we form a fricative. So the articulators here, the vocal cords come a little bit closer and we can hear the air friction. Now here's an example for the sound H, the word hope, H, hope. So you can just hear it's very soft, it's not harsh or anything, hope. Now, in the word behind, we also have a h sound, but you can see there's a different symbol used here. Usually you will just see the normal h symbol, but if you really um, perform or write down a very narrow transcription, exactly what somebody said, you might use this symbol instead and you might see it in transcriptions. It's the same as the h, but it just has this little tail on top. And this really is an allophone of H. And the only difference here is that it's just a little bit softer and more breathy. Um, so this sound, you won't find it on the normal English sound chart, uh, but of course it is part of the IPA. Um, so it only occurs though between two vowel sounds and um, it's very breathy voiced. So we had hope and then we can either say behind with exactly the same articulation as hope or quite often it's more behind, behind. And it's very, very soft, very breathy, almost sounds a little bit like a vowel, behind. Um, so here's another example. Um, in the word ahead. Here we have a normal H first, but we could also say ahead, ahead, ahead. It's very similar, just I would say a little bit softer, a little bit more breathy, and it almost has a bit the quality of a vowel, I would say. And in both examples, behind and ahead, um, the sound is wedged between two vowel sounds. And if you wonder what an allophone is, that is a variation of a sound um, that does not lead to a change in meaning. In English, we have, for example, dark and light l. Those are also two allophones of the sound l. They are a little bit different from one another, but they do not lead to a difference in meaning. And so they're called allophones. Do you have any other questions about these two sounds or any other topic to do with pronunciation or phonology? 
please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.